One of the first things that we analyze when we have or start working with multiple data is on which level each individual observation varies. We also calculate intraclass correlations to quantify these variables. Let's take a look at an example to understand what levels of variation on an individual variable level mean. We have here our profitability data for, com for a company. So we have five observations for a single company and the average profitability for this company is about 14% and the individual observations vary randomly around the average profitability because uh, companies sometimes have good years, sometimes they have bad years. So the performance is not always the same. So there's always some year to year variation. But that doesn't really uh, fully explain why a large data set of profitability figures would vary. Because there can be also other levels of variation. For example, there can be a company level variation. These red mounds each present one company and they are all working within an industry. And this blue area here represents the variation of the performance of all companies within that industry. So we can see that different companies vary. Their performance vary within company, but there are also variations between companies. So that this company here is consistently less profitable than this company here. So we have two levels. We have uh, the within company level and we have the between company level, which is also the within industry level. We can also add more levels. There is no limit on how many levels we can do, but let's go for an industry level. So we have these uh, blue five different industries and uh, the industries are differing their profitability. Some industries are highly profitable, others are not so. And we can see that the uh, individual variation of the data here is uh, a function of these three sources of variation. The between industry level, the between company level and the year to year variation within companies. To understand our data and understand the phenomenon that the data represent, we typically need to decompose that variance to, to somehow come up with percentages or some other statistics that quantify how much of the variation is here and how much of the variation is here in our data. If our data set is small, we typically start with a graphical analysis. So we can just uh, plot the data. This is 25 observations, five observations for each company, for five companies within one industry. We can see that there are some patterns. For example, this company, uh, there is not much variation in performance. This company is less profitable than that company and so on. This kind of analysis works well when you have a small set of observations. If we have a large number of observations, but still a fairly manageable number of clusters, let's say up to 30 companies or, or 30 industries or whatever is our level to unit, we can use box plots. Box plots are graphical representations of variation of individual variables and we can do box plots by groups. The idea of a box plot is that we are first uh, calculate for a variable, we calculate the median and the median gets this thick line here. So that marks the median. Then we uh, calculate the first quartile and the third quartile of the data. So quartile means that uh, below this line lies 25% of our observations and about the line 75% median is half and half and third quartile is 75% uh, and 25%. We draw a box between the first quartile and the third quartile and half of our data is within this box. Then we have these whiskers that indicate the minimum and maximum and sometimes we also have outliers that the box plot algorithm identifies as circles. So why is this box plot presentation useful and how can we uh, analyze the box plots? We can first of all start to understand the between and within variance by looking at the box plots. We can compare these uh, medians or we can do box plot with means and uh, we can check how much variation there is between these means or medians. And that is our, our between variation. We can also take a look at how high the boxes are and that quantifies the within variance. And comparing these two statistics, these two uh, dimensions tell us if the variation in this variable is more due to the differences between firms or is it just random variation or some other variation within firms. 
So is it a within from or between variation that explains the data? We can quantify the level of variation between two levels also numerically by calculating the within variance and between variance. This is our data and uh, we start by calculating a uh, group mean. So we take each of these companies and we calculate the mean of this. So that are these are the, the group means or cluster means for these these five firms. And uh, we check how much these means vary. The variation is quantified here with this statistic and then we calculate how much these individual observations vary from the group mean. In practice we do group mean centering. So we take each of these observations, we subtract the group mean and that gives us the group mean centered values. Then we calculate how much the group mean centered data varies and uh, this is our between variation, this is our within variation and uh, this is our total variation which is the sum of the between variation and the within variation. So the variation or variance uh, is a statistic that depends on the scale. It would be useful to have a scale free way to explain on which level the data varies. And this is where uh, the intra-class correlation comes to play. So intra-class correlation is simply calculated as variance between groups divided by the total variance. So it answers the question how much of the variation in the data is attributed to the groups and how much is attributed to the variation within the groups. This is called ICC1 for, for reason that there are many other kinds of interclass correlations. So interclass correlation generally refers to a correlation between observations and because there are many this is called the ICC1. There are like a few others but this is the most important one that you need to understand when you work with multi-level data. Other intercross correlations are mostly about reliability of multiple raters but ICC1 is uh, this, this simple equation that simply quantifies variation. When ICC1 is zero then uh, that indicates that there is no variance between groups. So the box plots are all on the same same level here. They, uh, there are no difference between means and, and in this case the medians are close as well and all variation is simply because there's variation between these within these groups. Then when interclass correlation is one then that means that there is no variance within clusters at all. All observations equals equal the level two mean. So uh, this firm's profitability is always here, this firm's always here and so on. So there's no within unit variation. Why do people calculate interclass correlation and how it's typically reported? The role of interclass correlation, the first role is to uh, make a decision whether something needs to be done for the cluster. If all the observations within clusters are the same, then you can just pick one observation for each cluster and use those in regression analysis. And it doesn't really matter that you have the, the remaining observations because they don't provide you any more data. If ICC1 is zero, then there's no clustering in, in, in that variable. And if your all your ICC1s are very low, then there is no meaningful clustering effect in, the, in your data. And it's possibly safe to go without a multi-level model. There are exceptions to that rule, but generally uh, when ICC1 is l close to zero or when ICC1 is close to one, then a multi-level modeling may not be needed. And, but if it's somewhere between, like it's 50%, then you typically need to take levels into account in your analysis somehow. Let's take a look at the example of how ICC1 has been reported in published research. So this comes from um, HouseNet's paper and this is a good example because uh, they first explain what the statistic is. So quite often people just report a statistic, report a number without explaining what ICC1 is. And uh, this study provides this concise description. ICC1 values can be interpreted as the total amount of variance in the dependent variable that is attributable to between unit rather than within unit differences over time. So that explains what the statistics interpretation is. And also uh, if the values are, are high then uh, regression analysis could be inappropriate and then you would have to do 
something else or for example use cluster over standard errors or multi-level modeling. And then they go on and they explain what is the actual statistic absenteeism 0.76 and then they explain what the statistic means. So giving this a uh, short introduction to your statistics uh, is very useful for your readers because your readers may not be uh, experts in using multi-level data. So make it easier for them.